Um, but let's get right into it. Uh, Colin, you've, you've, uh, you just released a game. Yes. Uh, which is super exciting. Uh, do you, do you want to tell our audience about that game and, and how, how this came to be? I, I wasn't aware, um, that this was a goal of yours, I guess, to, to, um, create a video game like this. So what was the process? How did this, how did this come about? Yeah, well, it's called Twin Breaker. It's on PS4 and Vita. Uh, cross buy, ten bucks or your local equivalent. And uh, yeah, it just uh, I've been friends with Barry Johnson at Lily Mo Games for a long time. He was actually like one of my very first PSN followers back in 2008 when we started getting trophies in games. Um, and we've just been kind of in touch briefly here and there. And then he started releasing games on PS4 and Vita. Uh, in 2018, I guess. And so he just kind of hit me up and we just ended up collaborating and working together. And um, yeah, I kind of wanted to get involved with him and he kind of wanted to get involved with me. And I thought that I could bring the writing and maybe some design shop, not shops. He's actually a great designer. That's not what I want to say. Some design philosophies that his games were missing and that and some marketing because um, it's hard to get attention on any of these small downloadable games. And then he could design and create and program these games and we would have a really good collaboration together. So it wasn't necessarily a goal that I always held inside, but I knew that once the opportunity presented itself, it was something that I really wanted to do. Mm. And it's just launched. Uh, h- how do you feel now that it's kind of out there in the world? Because it's a different feeling like uh, marketing something and then when it's finally out and you, and you have that feeling, you're like, you're confident and you know, it's good, but then to have that in the world. And it's, it seemed like from what I've seen, a really good response to it. How does that make mm, you feel? Yeah. yeah. We're happy to have it out there. It's cool to finally see what people think and get a lot of feedback. I think we've patched the game like four times to just um, deal with like really, I think three of the patches were before the game even came out to just deal with really minor issues with the trophies and some other stuff. Um, but we're learning as we go. And, We're happy people enjoy this kind of weird mix-up that we've done with uh, Brick Breaker with a story. Um, And I've always had a real soft spot for that genre. So it's cool to explore that. And we are happy with the sales. We started getting some sales figures uh, yesterday. And uh, obviously we did a, well not obviously, but we did do a physical release in which we were actually allotted more than twice as many as our uh, copies as our original allotment through to due to popular demand. So we're really happy with what we have here and it's just a building block we want to continue to work together we did an ama on playstation's reddit yesterday where we talked about how um, i'm actually acquiring a minority share in the studio um and that our collaboration is going to be permanent moving forward and we have pretty ambitious plans we're going to do a sequel to twin breaker next year and we're going to do a sequel to his other game herboxia which comes out uh, later this year but then we're going to make a a jrpg style game and um so Mm -hmm. we're all trying to climb into that mode and and get to that space and um yeah it's it's been really cool it's been it's interesting to be on the other side of it to be honest Mm. will your capacity involved in the studio be as a writer or will there be other things you're involved with yeah we're trying to figure well it'll probably primarily be in like the creative and writing uh vector uh verticals um and yeah i think I was originally going to be creative director, but I feel like that sounds like I'm running the studio and I'm not. I don't own a majority of the studio and um, Barry's going to remain in charge. So it'll be something like chief creative officer or something like that. And I'll be writing the scripts and um, kind of massaging the narratives or whatever for the different games, which are becoming more important in order for these titles to stand out. What was cool about Twin Breaker was you don't necessarily have to enjoy the story. You can actually skip all of it if you want the intro and all the collectible documents and the interstitial dialogue and the, like you don't need any of that to enjoy the game it's just it's just, it's there if you want it and so it's just another selling point for us so yeah we're going to try to combine our two skill sets in a in such a way that we can make this work yeah nice one mm. it's uh it was really interesting to play because it's not it's the sort of game that james and i uh probably uh are, are playing a lot but it's it I don't know. I, well, I mean, speak for yourself. I think, but, yeah, uh, sorry, man. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, you, you and I have been playing, especially you, have been playing more of these types of games um, mm. than... For sure, yeah. Uh, probably over the last 12 months more than anything. 
Uh, I think the first mm-hmm. thing I realized was like, oh, these smaller games are actually really fun. Even just something like Celeste when that came out. Um, oh, yeah, I just one, yeah. h- heard all these good things about it played. I was like, holy shit, these smaller games can be pretty incredible. And to have something like Twin Breaker, have a Brick Breaker style game with a story is an interesting touch. And as well, I said this on our last episode of the podcast that um, just before the game came out, because I had, I'd, oh yeah, I just finished at that point. It was the most Colin thing I've ever seen. It was I felt like it was like going into your brain a little bit because the themes behind it were very you and things you've you know you've been interested in talking about for years. Was that was it a story you already had in mind or was it did it come about while you were developing the game? I actually when we were developing the when he approached me when Barry approached me with this idea because he originally had approached me with um, a brawler and we had a demo for it that we were messing around with um and we decided to go in this direction instead to make something a little smaller and more bite-sized and so i had this idea of like how i can give context to a brick breaker which was some space theme which a game that this our game's based on a game called arkanoid from the 80s which i really love and there are little interstitial story scenes not very much but in that game and it takes place in space and you're like a spaceship and shit so um i knew i wanted to have something like that but Basically, the um, the bricks in the game are pieces of lost spaceships, and I knew that I wanted to do that, and then I kind of locked in later on the political ramifications of how this all happened on Earth, and it does play out the way I wish the future would go in some way, not with World War Three, which is what the game <laughs> um, revolves around, but in terms of a, a peaceful um, and neutral United States that looks towards the stars instead of looking towards fighting others and kind of it, the game's themes are supposed to be anti-war and I don't know if that comes through or not but mm-hmm. it was it, that's something that I wanted to put out there is like look at these amazing investments we've put um, in the game into space travel and finding other habitable planets because everyone's fighting and killing each other here and look what we can do if we just work together and then look at how skeptical this alien species is of, uh, is of us because of how we've been treating each other and so it's not necessarily the story i've always wanted to tell but it's the story that i think made the most sense and with the collectible documents especially i'm able to flesh out basically 300 years of history and 40 documents by just giving people a little bit of insight into the state of the world leading up to the events of the game so um yeah i'm I'm happy with the story it's it's cool some people don't like it some people think it's a little heavy-handed or glib or whatever that's fine um but what was most important was that the game is fun, and I, I think the game is really fun to play, whether or not you want any of the context around it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I really like the game itself. For uh, I mean, the story as well was one of the things that drew me to it. Is with brick breaker, brick breaker games and things like that, you don't normally get, you know, a huge story. And with things like platformers as well, like uh, one of the things that was great about Celeste, like Tyler brought up, was that it had such a I don't know a compelling story. And I think uh, Twin Bre- Twin Breaker has this has this sort of i don't know sort of like an aura about it with with the story that draws you in as well like the gameplay is really satisfying and fun to play like when i was streaming it i did it for our uh, patreon uh, exclusive stream in march um played through the the main story and it was um it was you know the gameplay is great i had there were some moments where i was losing my mind over some of the levels because uh, i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't do it maybe that's because i'm bad at games um, getting the getting the uh documents on 39 was a fucking nightmare for me personally <laughs> that was a nightmare yeah i mean i'm yet to do everything but uh yeah i had i had some moments where it was where i was struggling but uh that's sort of you know part of the fun is having that challenge if there was no challenge you know if I, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't have that fun but the story as well i think it conveys the message well i think it's fun um it's a very interesting story and have and having both you and chris as well uh there to sort of tell the narrative and be in it was just there was something just very fun about it i think that um was there as well it was very compelling and it was it was fun to just play through on that stream so i really enjoyed that i'm yet to go and do do all of the stuff but uh from what i've played so far uh i've i've absolutely loved it so uh yeah it's great that's great to hear yeah um Oh, we've gotten the feedback that a lot, you know, first of all, we, I didn't think the game was, I didn't think anyone was going to p- complain that the game was hard. Um, and that just comes mm-hmm. from, that's our own ignorance. We've played the game so much in making it that we just lost sight of the fact that we you know people don't know how to play it. Like 
the four paddles really blew a lot of people's minds. And oh my god, um, <laughs> that drives and me is, insane. And, 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 and it is, hard but like in a good and, way. In a good way. Yeah, like we. It's just funny. Like that's something we definitely need to check for the next time is to have more people play the game, so we have more of an anticipation of what people are going to say about it because very few people played it outside of um, us, and so. It's interesting to hear how difficult it is for some people and also that some people don't like that it's very RNG heavy in terms of um, getting items and getting the high scores and stuff, which we understand, although we don't really know that there's an elegant solution around that. And I kind of like that it's RNG heavy. It, it just it randomly gives you shit and like gives you yeah. that at least what we want it is like give you that feeling of excitement and like completion or whatever. So like level 39, if you're having trouble with that stage, like all you need to do is get like a heavy ball probably. Um, and S pl or, or playing on new game plus will be probably even better because the, the blocks are, are, there's more blocks and there's a better chance of getting a higher score and all that. And, and of course, like trying to buffer your score with the two times multiplier and using the shootable paddles to just get 10 or 20 points per shot by, um, hitting uh, the ball with it and shooting the scarabs, which is really valuable and stuff like there's just ways around it. So we think that some people also like I'm going to do a let's play of it soon, maybe this week. And the game can be played like really elegantly. It's really fun when you um, and I'm not like one of the great players of it either. Like I've seen some people play it in such an elegant way. And that's another fun thing about it. We in putting, you know, you hear this from developers all the time, but in putting the game out there, you learn that, um, it's going to be played and enjoyed and experienced in ways you never really thought, which is cool. Mm. Yeah, well, I, mean, we, I, but, I think the thing about it being hard is why it's good. I think James would agree with yeah, you. We I both was, love the fact that yeah, I was gonna we say, love yeah. ripping our fucking hair out with mm. games. It's a reason, I know you're not a big fan of it, but the reason we love Kingdom Hearts so much is because, especially if you're doing like the data battles, you're going to rip your fucking hair out. That's like the yeah. love of it when you you're do You'll be sitting there it. for like 10 hours doing the same thing over and over and over again. And then when you get it, you get this massive sense of satisfaction. And obviously, Twin Break is not that, not that hard. But uh, you get like I think like talking about like the the like the drops and how it's RNG based. I think it works because the main like gameplay is the is the point of it. And so you like if you if you had like a a way that you would know like when you were getting all these upgrades, all these bonuses or whatever. I don't think it will work as well because like you're relying on your skill and knowing exactly how the base gameplay works. And then if you get these bonuses, then great, like that'll help you out. But I think that I think how it works how it works is probably for the best. I think that works well, and it adds to that challenge as well. So, um, but personally, I mean, I, I love a challenge. So when I was on those hard levels, I was loving it because I was I was like I was I was ripping my hair out over it, going insane. But at the same time, it was great because I absolutely love that sort of challenging games. It's, it's something you don't get a lot in these big mainline AAA titles like that you're getting from like I don't know Sony or something. But when you get these, you know, these smaller games or these 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 more obscure games or something, you get this this challenge, and it's something that you miss a lot. And I absolutely love it. So uh, that was something I loved about Twin Breaker, I think. Yeah, I, w one of the solutions we were thinking about for the sequel that was from a, a fan of the game was like, why not have like set power ups that appeared on every stage, but the block would be randomized. And to your point, I, I'm like, I, I hate that solution. I actually think that. Um, mm -hmm the RNG is a better way to do it and just keeps it more exciting yeah, no, and more interesting. And yeah, the reason that we locked the collectibles behind A ranks and not S ranks was because we knew that some people would get frustrated. And um, the other reason that we did that was because, uh, well, with the trophies, like you only, to get the platinum trophy, you need to do a bunch of stuff, but you need to get all the stages A ranked, but only half of them S ranked. So I wanted to kind of keep things um like that for the uh the people that might get frustrated but again we didn't anticipate that so many people would find it so hard although i think that to your point i think a lot of people like the games being that hard so hmm. i mean i know i do so yeah i i think i found it get i found it easier to get the s ranks the 20 s ranks on not on new game plus because it was it was more about like doing it quickly so you needed to break the blocks quickly and hope you got like a heavy ball or, or the fireball or something like that that's what i found the quickest when getting all the collectibles and stuff i was like i'm not doing this on new game plus because you just it's, you almost need to do it really fast 
but then it's a lot of restarting, restarting, restarting. Because if you don't get a heavy ball quick, it's like, well, I fuck this. And you can't lose a life, that I found as well, because you need those health bonuses. But, yeah, no, it's it's a really fun game. You should be proud. Uh, and I'm excited for a sequel. And I, I think definitely keep all that story and stuff in. Keep the, keep the difficulty. If anything, I, I would love to see, like, a harder mode. An even harder mode. Like, something, mm, like yeah. a, like some sort of challenging mode that's even harder than that. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, I'm glad you hear. I'm glad to hear that because that's something that I want to do as well. The things that I'm playing, we're playing around with, or that I'm playing around with in terms of the narrative, is to maybe have. So the game, the first game ends on a cliffhanger, um, and I don't think we're going to do another one after the sequel. Maybe we would, but is to have like some sort of alternate um, routes through the game. So something like uh, Rondo of Blood or something, the Castlevania game, where there's just like different stages depending on the the not the choices you make, but kind of like the characters you find or whatever the case might be. So just having like a few different arcs through the game, I think would be really fun. Uh, and it's something that I think would be something we would want to do and maybe make the game a little longer. And yeah, we'll continue to have the narrative built into the game so that people understand more of the intent behind it. And yeah, we're excited uh, to get it out. But yeah, we have to worry about Habroxia 2 first and then we'll get into uh, Twin Breaker 2.